Chairman, the witnesses are now available for questions from the Commission and cross-examination. Commissioners, any questions? Let me ask the panel, how many megawatts are associated with the closing of these plants in this document? Uh, Commissioner Wise, that's 2,100 megawatts of capacity, both coal and oil fired. And there's a significant cost associated with closing these plants. Well, can, can you be can I assume that? Or? Well, yes, sir, there is. There is uh, certainly the, the cost that the company incurs and that we're currently recovering for dismantlement uh, of these units and, and returning them to brownfield uh, site conditions. Uh, but we also recognize, and we've heard today, that there is cost to the local communities, too. And the company doesn't take that lightly. As I said in my summation, we exhaustively looked at a number of different compliance strategies and analyses to look for ways to cost effectively bring these units into compliance for the benefit of all Georgia Power retail customers. And we put forward a plan which we believe strongly achieves that, but we also recognize that there are real costs in terms of dismantling these units and returning the site to brownfield status, but there's also cost to the communities. And so every time you, you, you take capacity off the system, you close a plant, there's significant cost. Yes, sir. As I just mentioned, yes, sir. What will be the company's reserve margin if all of these closures are approved? Uh, Commissioner, I don't have the numbers right in front of me. If, um, we could we could look it up. In the... Go ahead. Yeah, we can find it for you. Uh, at, at the time of the closing of the plants, the reserve margin will be, as I recall, somewhere around the mid 20s percent. So even with the closure of 2,100 megawatts and all of the costs associated with it, we'll still have a 25% reserve margin on the system. Yes, sir, for some period of time, and as load grows, you know, we lost about seven years of load growth that created that situation, and it's going to take load growth or some uh, sales of power to diminish the reserve margin. Meanwhile, yeah, I, I don't think that's any different than any of the other providers of electric service in, in the state, whether it's MEAG or, or Oglethorpe or, or anybody else, is there? Well, I'm not aware of what their reserve margins are, sir, but I, I would imagine that not only just utilities in the state of Georgia, but also throughout the region and the country are, are experiencing some of I follow the news in my local community, and we have an electric city, and, and they're battling and debating. What do they do? Do they hold it and eat it? Or do they try to sell it in the diminished marketplace today? But clearly, they've got tough decisions because of their significant reserve margins and the commitments that they've made as a city utility. I can only imagine that it's an increased level for a company the size of George Powell. Yes, sir, I would agree. And is it safe to say then that post closure, 2100 megawatts, that we really don't need to put any more power, any more coal powered plant, regardless of whether it's clean or anything else, we don't need any more natural gas fired we probably don't even need any more nuclear power. Is that correct? Well, the company has put forward its plan in this 2013 IRP, and you are correct that we have not identified a need to add any additional resources, traditional or renewable, in light of the company's reserve margins uh, and in light of the 2100 megawatts of retirements. So we don't need any more power, regardless of what the source is, whether it's solar, natural gas, hydro, regardless of the price, is that correct? Well, the company's view is that we certainly have enough capacity resources in place to ensure reliability during this planning period. But 25% margin is significantly more than just adequate, wouldn't you say? Yes, sir, it is. Uh, so the company does have sufficient resources uh, for the near term to ensure reliable service to our customers. The company does have avenues, however, Commissioner, that if a resource presents itself, it offers significant energy benefits to our customers, um, then the company can certainly consider that. We do that in energy-only QFs. We do that in other kind of extraordinary advantage opportunities when they come forward. Uh, the recent wind deal that the company announced is a prime example of that. 
where we've got an opportunity to bring in wind energy uh, that's below our projected avoided energy costs going forward that will literally put downward pressure on customer rates. So even though the company does not have a capacity need in this particular IRP, there are opportunities for us to consider ways to bring in lower cost energy uh, resources that put downward pressure on customer rates or at the very minimum do not put upward pressure on rates. Has there been any time in the history of the commission and its relationship with George Power, and if you can't answer that, any, any time to your knowledge that the commission has ordered the company to purchase power and generation assets that they said in the IRP or any docket previous to the IRP that they didn't need? Uh, not that I'm aware of, Commissioner, but I've not been involved with the commission proceedings <coughs> for a long, long time, but if not the, that I can recall. If the company was forced to buy power and generation in a time when we say have 25 percent reserve margin wouldn't there be significant costs associated with that and putting upward pressure on rates regardless of the source of the generation well yes sir the uh, the, the potential certainly exists so it, it would certainly be incumbent upon the company to evaluate any proposals along those lines and, and inform the commission if we had concerns that such a proposal would put upward pressure on rates so it certainly has the potential, Commissioner. That's something that we're very concerned about, it's something that we've always held as one of our firm principles in terms of adding capacity resources and energy resources with the overall impact on our customers. You heard some of the public comment this morning where they're, they're asking uh, the company to replace uh, the jobs and the taxes on some of the existing plant structure that you've got around the state that's in some of these plants that uh, are being proposed to be closed. If the company was again forced to do something like that, do you have a calculation that would be able to measure the, the, the cost of jobs and the impact on rates and associated with that that every other rate payer in the state would pay? Again, assuming a 25% reserve margin. Uh, Commissioner, I don't, I don't have a calculation at hand. I'm certainly when the company considers new proposals and especially if those proposals have the propensity to put upward pressure on rates um, we understand that there are job benefits surrounding some of those proposals uh, that could benefit the state but at the same time the company must recognize what is the broader impact of these policies and these recommendations because while it may offer some immediate help uh, to a particular uh, community or particular uh, industry at the same time, if it's having a tendency to put upward pressure on rates, then it could have a negative impact on our broader customer base. So that's something certainly that the company considers and, and when we look at uh, recommendations and proposals. And if the commission forced the company to accept additional <coughs> generation, do you have what's next in line, what to take offline, what, what other plant you would take offline <coughs> to, to replace additional generation that the commission would force upon the company? Well, Commissioner, that largely depends upon the, the, the nature of what the Commission ordered. Um, the, uh, in certain situations, it, it could potentially put pressure on, on other units, but depending on what the Commission ordered, you know, for instance, if it was additional renewables and it was structured properly, the company does not view those as either-or decisions. Um, you know, there's been discussion around you know, the, the value of the capacity that the company is bringing forward. It just really all depends on what the nature of the proposal is, Commissioner. The company does a great deal of planning in this IRP process, doesn't it? Yes, sir, we do. And if the company was forced to take generation assets offline in addition to what we're already talking about here, the 15, 16 plants, the 2,100 megawatts, and the cost associated with closing another plant, would the company be able to quantify the impact in rates? the impact on the loss of jobs and the tax communities, the, the taxes in the communities where the next plant in line would, would be on? Could the company do that? Yes, sir, Commissioner, I believe we could. Um, we certainly would understand what the potential rate impacts. It certainly is very dependent upon what the commission ordered of the company in terms of what type of resource and how that resource would integrate with the rest of the fleet. Uh, but at the same time, and then certainly we, we've got the economic development resources with the company to 